Hello everyone and welcome to a more detailed showcase of the ARC battleship. I will be going through some uh, more detailed explanations of things that I did on this build. And I'm also gonna go back and check some of the previous backups that I did during this time when I built it. So you can see a bit easier how I made certain things. I hope you'll find it interesting. So currently I'm on a local server and no clip is enabled. Most of this you could probably do without no clip, but um, you are much easier able to do more intricate designs when stuff goes into each other. Uh, so you can clip these in, inside each other, for instance, which you could not do otherwise. But the S plus integration in the beta branch, which this is on, makes it much easier to do things like this. This is no problem to do without no clip. So yeah, makes for a, a much easier way of doing these kinds of creative builds like this one. The way I started this build was just to map out a large area, roughly in the scale I wanted this, this ship to be. Uh, so I looked at several areas and then I just mapped out a really rough shape of the ship based on the uh, various research I did into World War II era battleships uh, of various kinds. Uh, the ship is fairly massive. Um, it's around 75 or so foundations long. Frame rates are not that bad. I'm at 1080p at the moment and get around 50-60 FPS currently. Just uh, playing around this. Uh, obviously, I mean, I don't have that many dinosaurs in, or creatures here, so that will lower the frame rate if this was on an actual server. This build features uh, these angled buildings that I made these towers from. Uh, I'm gonna show you more in detail how I did this later on when I show the halfway done build. Once we get to that point. One of the main things that I wanted to do in this build is to, to get a lot of detail down. Uh, where I've added these reservoirs like this. Uh, not for anything in particular, just to basically fill it up. Uh, fill the build up with detail. Same with these indentations in, in the deck that goes down towards this turret over here. Don't serve any real purpose. It's just not to have a completely flat wooden floor, you know. Same way with these artifact containers, they don't do much, they just add a little bit of detail uh, to this part of the build, because it's really flat otherwise. I've been using catwalks like this to smooth out the transition between these two angles, so they keep on going in here. This would not be doable without no clip, but when you have no clip you can do things like this to make it a little bit more realistic. I have this halfway ceiling pattern here with triangles in between to make the boat more boat-like in, in the main shape. But for the front here I managed to get these two angles, this angle right here and this angle right here, to make this part of the boat a bit more streamlined. And that meant I had to find a more complex pattern down here where you have these sloped railings that go downwards. It gave the illusion of, of a curve for the, this part of the boat. I can show you on the inside later uh, how that is done. I also have painted uh, a lot of this ship, not everything, but a lot of it. So this is metal painted brown the same way as down here. I try to keep the, the pattern here not necessarily realistic but rather keep the pattern so that the different parts of the ship stands out so that you have this curve going down but 
transitions into this part and then you have this curve going down that transitions into this part with these very long catwalk lines that goes through that helps with the illusion that this is more of a ship uh, rather than not but the whole color pattern of this is uh, basically brown slate and just natural all of the wood tiles are painted brown as well you're gonna see how it looks when it's not painted brown also this artifact container uh, is painted brown as well as this floor metal floor these are painted brown as well and this part of the turret is also painted brown just to basically add some detail and ease it up a bit so it doesn't become just so blocky this section here is uh, similarly just made to get a good transition between this turret and the other turret. It serves no real purpose other than aesthetics. And there is a pathway down here to below deck, which I didn't show in the showcase video. These here are just regular metal stairs that are clipped into this, to the ground or to the floor. And you can see here that I haven't gone down a full wall. Um, this is just an incremental lowered part of the ship to make the transition a bit nicer. Using reservoirs for decoration and a couple of bolts here as well. I tried to stick to a, a painting pattern of where different sections start or end so I painted this part brown here at the very bottom all the way around and then I have painted the very top as well all the way around it's a very very simple painting pattern but it works well to distinguish the different parts from each other it helps with the contrast it doesn't necessarily look realistic or anything but it just helps especially from afar when you look at the boat when it, when it becomes more more of a contrast between the parts. I've used heavy turrets along with these types of turrets uh, around this build. And most of it, it's, it's symmetrical um, on both sides. Uh, but in some cases, there is some differences. Uh, th for this, this part, for instance, is not symmetrical. This is a little tower turret thing here, which on the other side does not exist. Here we have this little crane instead, uh, which is made from these are zip lines, together with artifact containers and sloped ceilings, triangular ceilings, together with a charge lantern over here, which I also use for these little boats here as some kind of a fake engine here. Um, the pilgrims pointed out that this is actually some kind of, in the, on the real ships, this is a method of launching scout planes or seaplanes. I didn't know what it was when I built this, I just did my research on several battle type ships uh, from this era and basically put together um, different parts of them to make something that would look good in art. Because it's really hard to replicate a specific ship because they all have elements that it's hard to replicate using the tools that you have. But you can always find an element on some other ship that you can integrate into the build that will look nice. Another interesting thing that I think turned out great is this big chimney over here. I wanted to keep it kind of open, but still look as a chimney. And I managed to squeeze in three uh, of these uh, fireplaces down here, so that they're not visible like that much from the outside. You get a bit of a glow here, which I don't mind at all, it looks kind of nice. Uh, but from the outside, you just see the smoke coming up from it. I had to go with three because the smoke of just one was too, too uh, little. I mean, it didn't barely go up, so 
I have to, to put in three in order to get some smoke. All of these lines here are just standard zip lines. Just to add a little bit of realism to it. And yeah, the turrets are essentially identical. All three of them is just they are mounted or appear to be mounted on uh, different areas. And here in the back you have the entrance down to where you can actually use this ship as an actual base. An egg. So anyway, this part here. When you have this hatch frame just in line with everything else, it kind of looks odd, I feel. So I wanted to make an indentation where I could keep it. Uh, it turns out good, I think. Make it, make it a bit more seamless. Same here, it's painted brown, uh, the metal, together with everything else. This is where you get down. It's a huge space, this. Uh, this is an escape hatch. If you're under the boat, you want to get up. You can use this in order to climb up. I basically, basically furnished this very sparsely. I didn't spend a lot of time on this. But just as an example of what you could do down here, in order to actually have a, a proper PvE base down here. These days when you can do cryopods, it's much easier to get dinos like this in, but I also have a transmitter here if you want to get stuff out of here. Without using cryopods. And I also designed a little breathing area here. Uh, with all the necessary bridges and stuff like that. And here you can see the pathway up. On both sides. This. You can get down from this angle as well. From this area as well. We also have a little part of a base up here in this main area. Uh, where you can fit the beds and stuff like that in. No problem. Uh, and you have the electricity running below. I can show you that later on as well in the halfway build. So you don't have any visible cables anywhere on the actual ship. Because there's a ton of lamps on this ship, for instance up here. And all across like this. You see the electrical outlet, but you do not actually see the cables because they do run inside. This is the ship by night. I haven't done anything with the actual lights, it's just natural light. I haven't painted them or anything. I do have a couple of artifacts, like this one in the front. And I have a classic green and red one on the side. I also have hidden artifacts inside of these pillars. As you can see here, you, the artifact container is sticking out, but you place a pillar on top of that. Some artifacts are too big, but these ones, I don't remember which ones they are, they fit inside. You get a nice mood lightning without having to actually see the, the, the artifact themselves. I've also used these, not omni, but these directional lights. Just shine down on certain areas where I wanted the, the light to be wider. Because the omni directional ones, if you put them in the center of the boat, doesn't reach that far. Yet. And before we go back in time to check how the boat looked halfway through, I'm just gonna pop down here in the water and show you the foundation of this. The pillar over there is the one holding the whole boat up. And these pillars on the ground provides the actual foundation. You can have structural support. Like I said, 75 I think, roughly, uh, in length. To support this. And probably about 15 or so wide 
over here at the widest. But yeah, it's, it's pretty big, pretty big ship. Okay, so we're back in time. And the first thing you notice is that all of this is unpainted compared to uh, the finished footage. All of these wooden wooden ceilings here is unpainted. I mean, it's not a big difference when you paint them like I did in brown, but it does become something different because it becomes more homogenic. I mean, this this coloring is much more diverse, I guess. So the end product looks more like a deck, I feel. Also, there's no paint on this side. It becomes a bit more bland and in the same way here, it looks more boring, I feel, without that little touch-ups of paint. The way I did this, which I usually do, is that I built this side first. So I get the scale right and I get a general idea of how things should go together. And after that, I move over to do the other side. And as you can see on the side, it's roughly halfway done. Which gives us an opportunity to look inside and see how things are built. Here. So these rafts here. There are three rafts here. Uh, one for each turret. And they utilize a special technique in order to first and foremost tilt the structures that you build on them. And then also to float structures off of them. You can see here at the edge here where the floated structure is to the right and this this raft is still bobbing up and down here as you can see where it transitions. So essentially these are all identical, the turrets, and they're built the same way. Uh, this was an invention by Captain Fat Dog. I will link his tutorial video on how to float structures and also how to tilt them like this. You can see how it's done. So here's another raft. If you destroy these, uh, then the floated structures up on top will come down. So you need to get them out of here and hide them somewhere before you, you seal this up. You can ghost them out as well if you need to. But in order to actually build a base in here, I had to get them out, so they're parked. In the final version, they're parked over there in Viking Bay. And if they were to be destroyed over there, then the, the turrets would actually come down. Here from below, you can see the parts of the chimney and other stuff, which is just regular circles. In order to make this structure up here and this half circle in order to get a nice transition with these parts over here which are just regular S plus triangular builds over to this part where the chimney is or where the chimney is. So another interesting thing is these incrementally lowered ramps that go down like this in order to get uh, a decent transition from the front of the ship to the width of the mid-ship here. The way I usually do it is that I create like a part here where I add many ceilings for different heights and snap points which I can then use in order to build out ceilings to where I want a specific height to be. In this case you can see it right here. So from this area here, as long as you have foundation support, you can build out. So you can gradually have different heights here. As you can see that these ceilings go at different heights. It makes it also really easy to test different slopes, where if you want to have one spacing in between or two spacing in between, these are two spaces in between. If you want to have this type of tapering effect to go more narrow or wider. Also, it saves you the pain of having pillars, which you need in order to actually do this type of, of uh, raising and lowering. To have pillars all, all over the place. Now you only have the pillars in one place, 
which allows you to incorporate this into some kind of sloped inside, which actually works well as a, as a base part or something like that. Otherwise, you're easily going to end up having things like this, where a pillar just sticks down and you cannot remove it because it's a part of an actual lowered ceiling in order to make it work. In this case, it's, it's for these ones here, where they are different heights. I was debating back here how to finish this off, whether or not to have two turrets or actually have one turret and one kind of area for landing flying dinos and whatnot. And it turned out to be a good, decent place to actually have a walkway down. And these are just for show, these extra dinghies or lifeboats, if you will. Um, they were hanging first, I mentioned that earlier, but they were hanging from a structure here, but it just looked odd because of the fact that you needed to have enough space to have the zip lines attach. This is about just about the minimum space for, for a zip line to attach from one point to the other. If it's shorter than this, it won't, it won't actually be able to be, be snapped down. But that's the problem here because they were hanging, like you see on, on the screenshot, from, uh, from this structure above it and it be just became too high. So it just looked weird and odd, so I skipped it. So yeah, this is the build. I hope that it was informational and that you learned something from it. I'm happy with how it turned out in the end. It was a fun build to do. I didn't end up into too much trouble when making it, so it was fairly straightforward. So it was fun. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope it was interesting and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.